Hey FlossTube, what's up? It's Lee from Creatively here on Sunday 20th of December with FlossTube number 55. I um, am really struggling with the light today. It's a very, very bright and so I've had to pull the blinds and stuff. So the colour's probably going to be a bit crappy but um, it was either that or I spent the video doing this, which, you know, worse, right? So yeah, what's been going on? Um, 20th, so what's that? 11 days left of this uh, unprecedented year. Um, the number of times, I actually did a wee Google search the other day just to see how often unprecedented popped up on articles and what have you and like, I didn't have to go back very far. There was, like the word unprecedented was used obviously with a million COVID references, but financial, the weather, like it just definitely the word of 2020 in hindsight has been unprecedented. Um, so yeah, had a wee chat with my dad last, oh yesterday afternoon, thought I'd catch him waiting for the America's Cup racing, but he was outside doing some stuff, but um, so I let him, didn't talk to him for too long. I'm going to see him next Friday, so... I'm gonna, I'm gonna drive up on Christmas morning, get up early. That's usually when the least traffic is. Um, drive up to the Bay of Plenty, to Kaoro, and stay with Dad for just under a week and then head back for, around New Year's. I'm not sure whether I'll spend New Year's with my best friend. I don't know, I don't know where she's gonna be yet. We're still working out some logistics and stuff, but yeah, be back in, I'll be back in Upper Hutt, Wellington from New Year's. Um, but he's doing really good. He rang me, gosh, one day last week to tell me he was the proud custodian of the Friendship Society, Probus. Mm, are they the same thing? Do they change their name? Not sure. Um, some random quiz thing anyway. So he said um, the team he ended up being on they, they won um, and they said he should take the trophy because they've never won before and it was his general knowledge, as he says, uh, useless information uh, that helped them win. So he now has this um, trophy. It's some, I haven't seen it. I'll get a picture of it if I do. I mean, he's got it for two months. So some owl, which he said it's a bit creepy because it just stares. But he said it's not looking at him, it's looking up. So that's lucky. <laughs> I'd be like, if that owl, if I look up and there's this owl thing staring at me, I think it would just find a new home in the shed or something. So he said he's quite quite keen next February when the next quiz night is or quiz afternoon to uh, to try and win it. He reckons, you know, like a heavyweight champ, if you win it, if you successfully defend your title, I think twice, you get to keep the, the belt permanently. So yeah, he's a dag. So he's having he's had a good um, lead up to Christmas, I think. Working from home next week, a um, couple of days working from home, coming a couple of days off, uh, and then yeah, getting the house all cleaned up and fridge emptied and all that before I go away. So quite excited about the fact that I'm nearly done with work until. 11th of January it'll be I'm so tired like metaphysically exhausted um, Friday night we had a um, the director at I'm the information directorate we had a bit of a knees up I guess um, in the afternoon so I guess we knocked off work at 1 p.m. Uh, and went down to a local bar and partook of some festivities um, we all paid for our own. I think, I think that management might have put on some food, but we you know, paid for your own drinks because government, we don't really get booze paid for us. Um, it was kind of nice to get away from work, but it was we're actually while well, we're down on the waterfront. It was so windy; it was actually quite cold. I never feel the cold, and I felt cold. I had a coffee, so people were boozing up, and I went and had a, a warm drink because I just didn't feel that great. And then once I warmed up, like my hands warmed up, I felt a lot better. But then went um, back to work, met up with another friend, and we went off to the movies, and we went to see Blythe Spirit, um, which, if you know, is 
a based on a screenplay by Noel Coward, written in the 40s, I think. Um, but this is a modern rendition. It's been made into films, I believe, in the past. It was entertaining, um, beautiful. So it's set in, what, 19... 1937, I think it's set. Um, beautiful costuming um, and, you know, lavish sets and very luxurious sort of... Um, and the two female characters, leads played by Leslie Mann and Isla Fisher, both who look fantastic in their costuming. And... Um, yeah, it was kind of... It was fun. Fun and and mostly light-hearted and just what I needed. So yeah, we had a good time um, looking at that, watching that. That's it, so that's pretty much the life update. Yeah, a few more days of work and then I'm done and I can't wait. So I did have, finally, after months of lost parcels and watching, tracking, not moving, finally got the four months Victorian Motto Sampler Shop Club goodies arrive last week and I was so excited. Um, I've actually taken a nice picture of the four months. It's four fat quarters of 36 count and 24 skeins of floss. The, it's all the prim, primitive um, muted collections. So I've taken a picture of it all laid out really nicely. So here it is here. I'm just going to quickly show you what I got. Um, so I don't know what month belongs to which. I believe that Nancy dyes 18 colours a month for the floss. I only get six a month. Uh, so you don't necessarily get the same as other people. So I'll quickly whip through them. But here are the um, four pieces of fabric and they're all beautifully soft samplery things. So we've got sand. This one's called neutral sampler. Can't argue with that, it's definitely neutral. Uh, this one is called natural, so it's a bit warmer. Uh, and this one is parchment. Uh, quite a little bit, quite similar in colour to, I would say, um, Legacy um, by Picture This Plus, except it's not as motley. It's just, yeah, the, the mottling is more tonal, not less sharp. So yeah, those four came. And then um, the skeins of floss, which I'll sh they came in two bags. So I'll show you one bag and then the other bag. Um, and they're just luscious. <laughs> I mean, look at that, just makes me so happy. So we've got dried cherry, rusty coral. I love that color. I love this color. Pilgrim squash, uh, hearth and home, autumn weave, harvesting basket. Mocha rum, mocha rum. This is lovely and soft. Fog. If only fog was that pretty. Heather bouquet. Lavender harvest. Lavender sachet. And I love this colour. Wild berry medley. So I would call that a heathery sort of it's really pretty. I love I love I love dull muted colours. There's those twelve and the next twelve uh, Americana berry dark cherry barely orchid shaded flax shaded tan Fall Arrival, Vermont Autumn, I mean take me to Vermont if that's what Vermont looks like in autumn, I mean look at that colour, 
Americana Brown, Autumn Dark Brown, this is pretty, Rock Moss, Prairie Grass, and Tree Moss. So, I don't know if I can do this, those are all of the 12 skeins that I got. So, my plans are, now that they've arrived, and I've, had, I've actually kind of started to do this, is to do my best to kit up um, with that, those 24 plus the previous 12 or so that I have in my collection. Kit up, kit up um, the Red Deer Sampler by, from Gigi R. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be a bit stuck with a couple. This calls for four skeins of Piney Woods. There's nothing in here, I've got nothing in my Victoria Motto collection that that is the same, was close to, or a good sub for Piney Woods. However, I don't want to buy four skeins of Piney Woods. So, I'm probably going to, I don't know what I'm going to do. Either I'm just going to do the dark brown, I have to pull it all together, or I will look for, um, just use the DMC. So that's what Piney Woods looks like. I've got one skein, or well, just under a skein, so I used it on um, the Berry Roll sampler. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. I don't really want to buy four skeins of Piney Woods. And the other one I probably don't have is that I can't make something work with what I've got will be... Um, Deep Forest, which I'm guessing is a dark bluey green. So I don't have anything dark enough, I don't think. So, but that's only one skein or a part of a skein. So again, I may just go with the DMC for that. I just don't want to buy anything extra. I mean, there's like, you know, a shitload of stuff here. Um, I should be able to make it work. Definitely got enough the red. So I've got 123 different reds. Um, yeah, so I'm quite keen to um, kit that up. So it's not going to be the same, but that's okay, because I'm going to change it. I don't care that it's a repro. And just a reminder, I bought this a while ago from in preparation for it. Um, it's I think it's just uncalled for as the, um, you know, Confederate Grey. But um, I got, I uh, chose... Um, Edinburgh 36 count pumice from Country Stitch and that's going to be what I stitch it on so it's a memory it's slightly it's a very good sub for the photo it's probably got a bit more greeny brownie in it but um so I will see what will work and I'm going to have fun kidding that up and then I will intend I intend starting this I think on my birthday which is the 18th of June. I probably will buy myself a couple of PDF charts next week for my little Christmas um, Christmas sort of treat for myself um, and I think I'll sign up for the Modern Folk Embroidery sale, the, um, the 2021 sale, because I do love it. I'm just not sure whether I'll start it straight away because I don't, yeah, I don't know. I'll think about it. Um, because the other way I stitch, I would rather have even like the whole top so I can stitch across. Because I don't stitch pages, I stitch motifs or I stitch um, sections and when they cross over that makes me uh, annoys me I'd rather just like wait to get the next bit of it if that makes sense anyway we'll see but I'm pretty yeah I definitely want to do that one I think it looks really lovely um, so yeah I've had no starts this week well done Lee no finishes getting close though on a couple of things um, am I really getting close on a couple of things I'm getting close on one thing, <laughs> you'll see. Um, yeah, I've got no finishes, no FFOs. 
I worked on four whips, so I've got a little bit of stitching to show you in a minute. Um, let's get cracking on that. What did I start on? Okay, so I think I did a bit of this last week. I don't remember, but I decided I'll carry on with my excuse the terrible print here. Um, Long Dog Sampler Arcade. And um, to remind all y'all, I'm stitching this on 36 count geyser from Country Stitch. I'm using PR137, silks for you, DMC 500. Reminder, need to buy another skein of DMC 500. Uh, and, oh my god, okay, Krennic. I can't read the chronic backwards. BF085. Started this in September. Um, did a little, had a bit of a break from it, but I, I actually got quite a lot done this last week. Uh, last time you saw this, I had started, done this bit. Yeah, search through here. I'm pretty sure. I know I've done these bits. I can't remember if I've done that bit or not. But anyway, I carried on and got all of this side done. Oh yeah, I'd stitched the through to the P, I I think. But I got all of this bit done. So right along the top, actually, these two little pieces are a part of that. I didn't, as I was stitching this, I didn't realise, because I want to do that whole thing right along the top. So I guess there are five of these, let's call them trees, because they come up. Um, there are five of these, so I've got three of them done, so, and I think the middle's about here, so I think it's about this high, so I'm a good two-thirds, no, not two-thirds, maybe a third of it, just over a third of it done, maybe two-fifths, so yeah, I'm really happy with it, um, I think, uh, I love how these are all similar, but really, really different. Different amounts of back stitching. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, there are some little hearts in these that I'm not sure. They're charted for a different colour. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those yet, given I've already put sparkle in a different colour in the other hearts. But I might leave those little hearts to the end and they can be my little finishing touch. So yeah. That is what I spent the majority of the week on. Um, I gave that a really good four nights, I guess. Um, yeah, four nights stitching. Maybe five nights stitching. Oh, no, it's stitching. Um, hmm. Then I, given the second to last piece for the year of black work, by Peppermint Purple, by Peppermint Purple was released, and I've, so the last square's coming out next week, um, so I decided let's just get that all ready, it'll probably take me, it's a small square, I think it's going to be a simpler square, she said, so that's going to take me, I don't know, 40 minutes to finish next week, and then I've been, that might be my last finish for 2020, so I've got it all I should show you it, eh? So it's on 18 count antique white Ada using the Call 4 DMC and one of the um, free, um, one of Peppermint Purple's free borders, which I showed you a week or so ago. So I have stitched everything except that last little square down the bottom. And I think it is looking fantastic. And I know a lot of people, I mean, there's a million different variations because people have changed their alternates for these two um, rows. Some people put words or phrases in there, different borders. Some people have gone crazy with the borders. Some have gone monochromatic. Some have gone, it's, but I've just gone for the call for, but I think adding that border, I think I said the other week, just adds a something, uh, just elevates it to something a bit more fancy. Yep, so one more little tiny square and I'll be done. So that'll be my last, yeah, I think, unless some miracle, unless I pull some miracle out of the hat, might be my last finish of 2020. So I'll get that stitched when it comes out on, so I'll probably finish on Thursday. 
where I'm going to put in everything. Um, then yesterday, well, I was sat down to watch um, the America's Cup racing, which then was delayed. So the America's Cup, the Amer actual America's Cup, where New Zealanders defenders goes up against the challenger, as yet to be decided. The actual America's Cup's not until March, but there's, um, I guess, there's a number of challenger series in the Christmas Cup today, and I don't even know what, but there's some match racing, um, and then this weekend's the last weekend New Zealand's going to race the other countries. There's Britain, so the UK, um, uh, Luna Rossa, Italian Boat, um, and uh, America um, are all doing this round robin kind of thing. So I think yesterday New Zealand won whatever the series was for that. There's more racing today which is for a Christmas cup. I don't really get it. I don't really care. Um, anyway, I sat down yesterday afternoon to watch it and because of the weather, because we didn't have enough wind, they delayed and then they moved the course and had to move all the boats that were in the way. So I think it started quite a lot later. So even though the races are really quick, I got a bit of extra stitching time. And I f I'm getting to the point, honestly, where because it was really good light yesterday, I picked up my 55 count, aka 56 by 60 count. Um, I did a little bit of work on this. I cover it up because I'm not sure it's genuine. This is in, I think it's probably stolen. Basically a little red sampler that I found ages ago and before I kind of realised it probably wasn't actually a free sampler. But I'd, anyway, I was a bit naive. Um, I don't know dodgy Russians copied stuff. But anyway, I picked that up. So the song, yeah, it's supposed to be 55 count, but it's not quite square. Um, and the last time you saw it, this rooster chook down here didn't have a head and the bottom tail. So basically I finished that. And then from there, I just, you know, up to get the Y and I got the Z and then up to the P. And it just, it's definitely harder to count across on this. So you want to find wherever you where the path of least resistance is, the smallest number of stitches to count, and then count three times and then hope you got it right. And then got this, which do you think it's a horse? I thought it was a dog, but it's a horse, isn't it? I'm not sure. It's prancing like a horse, but I feel like it's got a dog head, so I'm gonna call it a dorse or a hog. It's a dog horse. Um, got this fleur de lis, what well, is not a fleur de lis, but this flourish done down here and then the little house. So I got quite a lot done yesterday. Basically that, 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 and that. So it's halfway. Rest of the alphabet and two, two flourishes and then there's a hair at the top. But as soon as the light started to, as soon as the sun started to go down, it's definitely needs bright light. Um, bright light and um, direct light and not tired. So again, I haven't got a little card for this because it was just a bit of a fun. I'm um, stitching this with a Gutterman cotton. Um, bum, 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 colour 2074, it's just sewing cotton um, on the 55 count. So I got a little bit of that done and then I thought after stitching on 55 count, why not pick up Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. If I sneeze, I apologize. Ink Circles, Black Stone Fantasy. It says Sampler, but it's actually called Fantasy Garden. I'm gonna change that. It's Blackstone Fantasy Garden, which I'm stitching on 28 count, so massive compared to the 55. 28 count um, Limestone Eve Lugana from Country Stitch. And I'm making it up as I go along. I started this at retreat, 31st of October. Um, and this is what, so I'm using my own colours, um, partly because these colours aren't available, because they were Carriage Creations. Um, well, that's the main, but I've also, it, it's going to be quite different, is really what I'm trying to say. 
Um, and I have finished. Oh, I just lost my clip. I finished the second border, second of three. So this um, one. I hadn't quite finished down here, I'd come all the way off the centre variegated colour and then, so finished that off and then I've finished the outline in the 16 I think it is. Um, so there's another border, it's a bigger border which has the corners and it goes diagonally. Oh, I don't know how it goes. It goes around like this and through. You can see where it goes because there are lines there. So it obviously goes sort of twice. There's two rows. I don't even know what I'm saying. It's going to be still quite a bit of stitching to do on that border. So I've got it that to this point now. And um, next time I pick it up, I need to get another 610. I need a 10 six, And I'm still waiting. Uh, anyway. So I don't know what I'm going to be doing for the um, black work yet, as in what colours. Uh, it might be I just grade my Victorian Motto stash. When the original design, the insides have a lot of blues and sort of burgundy colours and what have you. Um, but... I don't have any blue in it. There was the, the what I'm doing is a brown border that we originally, that looks like that. Curious Creation had a lot of blue and went from blue to tan, so quite interesting. So um, I think I'm just gonna have to play with different colors and work it out. I think it needs one, two, three, four. There are seven different black work colors. So we'll just um, give stuff a go, really. So looking forward to getting to the black work um, and filling in all those gaps. It does feel very cream at the moment, like the, you know, because it's very orderly. Um, but I think once it gets all the black work in, it will just add that sort of delicate um, interest to what is quite a stark sort of hard lined design at the moment. Um, there's a lot of stitching in that border. So yeah, that is what I got done this week. So quite a lot of progress, quite pleased with that. Um, feel like good stopping points, good stopping point um, on Arcade where I got that one sort of tree finished, a good stopping point on um, Blackstone so I got the second border finished and this is obviously very close to being finished. So quite happy with that. So yeah, this afternoon I'm going to um, have a play at, proper play at cutting up the Red Deer Sampler now that I've shown you the silk, not the silks, now that I've shown you the, the cotton from Victoria Motto, I can put it all into, mix it all up with the other stuff that I've got. So I'm going to give that a go, um, see if I can come up with a palette that makes me happy. Um, and make a decision about what I'm going to do for the two colours that I'm least confident I have in my stash. Especially since one of them I need for a uh, four skein. So a 20 yard skein from Victoria Motto would be enough because I'm pretty sure that um, it will be enough because I stitch pretty frugally and um, I think that the get Gentle Arts are normally five yards. So that should be fine. But I might just go with, I just might go with the DMC for it. It's all the vine work and it's probably my least favorite of the design is the vine work. Be that particular greeny shade. Uh, and then I've got, because I've got this fabric now, um, I'm gonna go through some of my other projects that you know, I've got charts for and see if I can match up any of these to work on some of those. I've got a couple of plum streets that um, you know I could probably make. I feel like this one will work for one of the um, either a gentleman's daughter or the library one. Uh, and yeah, 
yeah, so you'll see if I can match up fabric because they're all 36 and I want 36 for those. Um, maybe think about which one might work for, so I haven't checked the size, but I'm sure it wouldn't need more than a fat quarter. Check if one of these might work for my modern folk embroidery that I, you know. So I'm going to do that, work through some stuff, try and match up some existing fabrics to projects now that I've got a little bit more of my stash. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do this afternoon while I've got some light. Um, I'm also, <clears throat> for, for this week, um, because next Sunday I'm going to be up in Kawaro, filming a video can be a bit awkward. Um, just even like setting up the camera. It's bad enough setting it up here on piles of stuff that I put my phone on. What, but what I'm going to do is, um, in preparation, I'm going to pre-record part of a finish parade. Um, with all my finishes from 2020. I've put out all the cards, I've ironed everything, they're all stacked in order, uh, but putting them on and off on and off a board is a bloody nuisance. Um, so what I need to do is work out, um, and also all the stats and everything. So I might pre-record as much of that as I can, and that way I can just add that on at the end of my quick little update which will probably be a I bought these two charts and here's a whip parade I'm not a whip parade here's what I worked on this week um but I'll only be taking probably I'm only going for five days so I'll probably only take one project up um I'm only there for five days I don't need that much to do um but I could get quite it'll be hot it'll be so hot on my dad's that I may not even be able to search that much because my hands will get sweaty um it it's yeah, I'm not looking forward to that part of the trip, <laughs> but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be good to have a break from searching as well, to be fair. So, until I see you again, happy holidays. Find joy in your stitching and keep safe and don't let your needles rust. Ciao.